Hello. Gosh, I didn't think I'd need sunglasses, but I do. I'm English, so I'm going to be forced to say that I'm not the only person who does that sort of stuff. There are lots of people doing that sort of stuff. There's a little community now who are looking at ways that we can kind of plug the product management and UX and agile skill sets together. But the thing I want to talk about a bit today is a problem that I have seen in several of the teams that I've worked with. And that's this huge focus on pushing stories out as quickly as possible. This little kind of sausage machine of delivery being um, the focus of all the discussion within the delivery team. And I'm going to talk about those problems with a few mildly simplified fables. And our fable starts with a North Star. You know, there is the, the thing we want our product to do, the business objective we want to fulfill, the thing we want our customers to do at the end of it. And hopefully that's come about because somebody's done some discovery work and done some research or validated some ideas and they build a little customer journey that talks about how we get from where we are now to the North Star that we're aiming for, a, a roadmap, a user story, um, a customer journey. You know, the things our customers will do to, to reach those goals, the thing that we want to deliver in the end. And then we take that customer journey and someone, maybe with a label like product owner, cuts them up into little stories. Okay? And then we order our stories, so the important ones are at the top and the less important ones are at the bottom. And if we're in a, a Kanban-y, lean-y, flow-y type environment, then we kind of just work through those in order of importance, one by one, this nice regular flow of stories. And if we're in a scrum environment, then we take like a batch of those at once, and those are our, sorry, my microphone's escaping my head. Um, we take a batch of those at once, and that's our, our sprint goal and our sprint backlog, and we say, we're gonna do these things and deliver them. And everything works wonderfully. Except it never does. It's a lie. And it's a lie because kind of stories are not of a uniform size and shape. You know, we have tiny ones. We have less tiny ones. We have bloody huge ones. Um, we sometimes give them different names, like epics for the big ones. But we still have to understand how that affects our work. So we have exercises like um, planning poker or t-shirt sizing to let us know kind of, we think this is a small story, we think this is a medium-sized story, we think this is a huge story. And then we have our prioritized backlog, but now we have some understanding of how big the stories are. And the problem is, is we can't leave them like that because if we're in a, a kanban -y, flow -y type environment, then amongst other problems, we have, we have issues like this. We have kind of the, the, the waste created through unevenness. We have a very bursty flow. We have some big things that take a long amount of time and some small things that take almost no time, no time at all. And sometimes we have more, more resources than we need and sometimes we don't have all the people we need to deliver that thing. So we want to even things out. The same goes for Scrum. If we take on a, a commitment or make a forecast for our, our next sprint backlog, if we've got these big chunky things, then we're either going to undercommit like this, we're going to have some space in our, in our sprint that's not used, or we're going to overcommit by taking on too many big stories. So what do people do? People take one of two courses in my experience. The first one is they take their big story and they cut it up into lots of little tiny stories based on mostly focusing on the, the amount of effort it takes to do things. Like we've got this big 
registration story. Okay, that's got logging in and checking that you're not a duplicate user, that's a separate thing. And we've got password reminders, that's a separate thing. So you cut it up into lots of different things. The other approach that I see a lot is you take a big story and you cut it up into the, into the tasks you have to do to deliver the whole thing. So you have the, the, vis the graphic design story, and the front-end story, and the back-end story, and the database story, and the ops story, and the testing story, um, or task, depending on your level of granularity. And then, once you've cut things up, you're back to the backlog of roughly similar-sized things that you can then deliver in a nice way. Unfortunately, this is, of course, a lie. Um, it's a lie because our customers and the people who use the services and products that we deliver do not care about the story. They don't care if it's an extra large or a small t-shirt size. They don't care if it's you know, a one-point story or a 15-point story. They care about the value it delivers. Um, in monetary terms sometimes, in making their experience better in others, in being able to buy the dog food for next week. Whatever it is that you're, you know, the people are using your service for, that is the thing they care about. And what happens when you cut up stories in a way that's around, OK, how do we turn this into a separate thing? If that's your focus, if your focus is, let's make the big thing smaller, what happens is you, you get a bunch of little sh small stories, and they go, those are quite easy to deliver. That's fantastic. And we think we're being productive. We think we're delivering lots of stuff. Unfortunately, most of the customer value is sometimes in that little thing that's left over in the bottom corner somewhere that we didn't get round to in the sprint that's, that's pushed back to the next, the next iteration. It's even worse when you take a big story and cut it up into tasks. Because if you do some of that, you know, if you just do like the visual design and the front end and a bit of the database, you've got nothing that the customer can actually use. You know, all the value is in the whole thing. If you just deliver a little bit of the jigsaw, they don't get anything at all. Somewhere between that conversation about the North Star and the customer journey, a lot of teams seem to lose their focus on the customer value part of the story, the why we are doing this thing, the value that we are delivering in the services that we're building. Story points are focused on the size of the thing. And many of the teams that I've worked with, when they're having that conversation about, let's turn this big epic into smaller stories, let's turn these medium-sized stories into things that we're confident we can deliver in a, in a week. Those conversations are all around, like, how do we make the big things smaller? They're not around, how do we deliver value to our customers earlier? And to get people past that, I've been using three questions. And this is right down in the guts of the delivery team. This isn't something that we're doing when we're doing discovery work. This, this is when we're building stuff. And the first question is, can we take a story and bin it? Can we throw it away? Or can we defer it? Um, one of my favorite examples of this is we were building a um, a subscription service. Um, it was actually for a job board um, in a niche market. And their original business model was around um, most people in this area, you, you charged per job post, and what they were going to do was charge a one-off, you know, a monthly fee for as many job posts as you liked, which appealed more to this particular niche market in catering. And so, unsurprisingly, there were some stories about subscribing and charging them every month. We didn't do that for the first month because the first month was free 
and we didn't have to charge them until the end of the first month. So we just didn't build that at the start. We pushed it away until the end. And intriguingly enough, during that first month of the product being out there, we discovered a bunch of more important issues than that to spend time building. Um, there were some, after we'd launched, some SEO issues, and once we'd launched to a wider set of people than the people with usability tested, we found some other problems that we were missing in some of the navigations. We cleared that up instead. So again, in the, in the next few weeks, rather than building the subscription service, we focused on this instead, because it was important to get the product right for the customer first. And then after that, they changed their business model. They actually decided to upsell this service as something from their offline consulting, rather than charging it as a separate service. So if we had spent our time building that subscription stuff right at the start, rather than deferring it till later. And that was a conversation that we had all around value. That would have just been complete waste, because in two months' time, they would have never used it again. The second question you can ask about a story is, can we thin it? Can we put it on a diet? Can we deliver most of the value that we want to do, or a good chunk of the value that we want to deliver to our end customer with a lot less work. One of my favorite examples of this was we were, one of the, the stories that came through was around a fairly advanced search on this data set. But the actual task that most people were doing was just one case of that. And so what we delivered in the first version was basically that search by default as a long list. And if you wanted to do something extra, you phone this number. And that dealt with 95% of the people who were using the service. Um, it was an internal, internal thing. And the, the rest of the group weren't actually worse off than they were before because there wasn't an online service to do this before. And again, that delivered a lot of learning. We could put out uh, a bunch of value that the customer could use much earlier. And that was because our conversation, again, was all around what value does this story deliver to our end customers? How do we do that more effectively, rather than how do we turn this big story into a small story? And the last question to ask about a story is, Kind of like the default one I talked about earlier is can we, can we take a story and can we split it into multiple stories? But again, the question you have to ask about those multiple stories is do they actually deliver value to the customer? Do they actually deliver something that they want to use? Because otherwise it's pointless doing it. Um, so again, with the registration example, for example, Registering, is that necessary for everyone right at the start? We had a, a product where there was a admin user for the initial few releases in the plan because we were going to test it on a small subset of people before we rolled it out to the larger organization. So we just split out all the password reminder, registering, checking the duplicate account stuff that was involved in that story, and hardwired one particular customer, that particular admin user, in as somebody in the account. So we just um, split it up into lots of little stories, focused on one of those that we could deliver, and the other ones then got deferred to later on. But the important thing there was the, the thing that we did build delivered value to that customer. And all the other separate things that we split out, things like a password reminder and be able to register a new account, they also delivered value to the customer. That was what the conversation was about, not can we make the story smaller. But of course, we still need our stories to be smaller, because otherwise, we have those problems that we talked about earlier. We have, you know, 
bursty flow we have under or over committing to sprints. But this is the nice side effect that I always see when we ask these questions. It's if you have some stories, and you take some of them and bin them, then they go away. And you take some others and thin them. And when you thin something, you're doing less. So they're naturally smaller stories. And then if you split some other stories up, again, splitting them naturally turns them into smaller stories. There might be more of them. Um, and in aggregate, they might be more work than doing it in one big chunk. Um, but they all provide value and they are smaller. And if you take those stories that you generated and ask those questions again, and ask those questions again, you get smaller stories. But you get those smaller stories by talking about the value that we deliver to the customer and the things that they need to do and the business objectives that we have for this product rather than having a conversation about how are we going to build this or you know, can we do a crappy UI for this bit rather than talking to the visual designer? Can we take a shortcut? Can we um, you know, skip QA just this once? You know, <laughs> people, I'm sure you've had those conversations because I've had those conversations. Um, because the focus in many teams that I've worked with is around how do we deliver this stuff quicker? How do we deliver this stuff in smaller, in smaller sized things rather than how do we deliver more value to our end users earlier on? And those three questions, thin, bin, and split, still make the stories smaller. Let's go back to that North Star for a second. Something that Mike mentioned briefly, just out of curiosity, who, who uses user story mapping as a thing? Oh, about 20%, so that's good. Um, user story mapping is awesome. You should all use it. Um, <laughs> there's a really good book by Jeff Patton, who I bought a ridiculous number of copies for people over the last couple of years. Um, I thoroughly recommend it. But, to go back, to my, back to my North Star, and we have our customer journey. And what you do with user story mapping is you talk about the steps in that user journey. Um, and then you talk about the user stories to make achieve those steps in your customer journey. So if you're buying something, you know, the the the, the, the first thing might be find a product, and the last thing is going to be checking out and buying. And the interesting thing is you have different slices of the customer journey. And the, ver the vertical, yes, vertical dimension is kind of each slice is, think of it as a release. So the, the top slice is the absolute minimum we have to do to deliver that service. So for an e-commerce product, the top slice might be we have one product, and we have it on a home page, and then there's like a link to PayPal, and you can buy it. You know? And as you, the next slice might have you know, multiple products. The slice after that might have um, you know, a search and other ways of checking out. But the thing is, each slice lets you achieve the whole customer journey. It lets you buy the thing, which is what you go to the website to do. And each slice increasingly makes that a better and better experience. And if you're doing user story mapping, which, as I said, you should do, because it's awesome. Um, but what I see people do is do it as a one-off exercise. They do it right at the start of building the product as a way of kind of getting a rough order to the backlog. And then once they've done it the once, they kind of, you know, the top slice is the most important thing, and then the slice underneath is the next most important thing, and that's the order of the backlog. We're done. Throw it into Jira. He tries not to swear. Um, and just deliver all the stuff. And if you do that, 
you miss a lot of the value of doing user story mapping, in my opinion. Um, if you keep the user story map up and around, you can start asking interesting questions about priorities and changing stuff and what we're building next. And you can use those thin bin split questions all the time. For example, if, if you've got a story that you can defer or bin, then that's obviously less important and not needed in the current release as much. So it tends to push stories down in the, to a later release in the user story map. Equally, if you've, got a, if you've got a story that you can thin, then you are delivering more value for less effort. That's likely to tend to push the story up in the user story map. And if you've got a story that you're going to split up, then that can be a little bit of explosion. You know, some of, them, some of the things that come out of that split might be really important and tend to move up. Other things might be, oh, that's really not something we need to build now. We can push that down. Other bits might be, oh, actually, we're talking about that bit of the customer journey with a bit more granularity. So that kind of pushes things out left to right. And again, it lets you have a really useful conversation about the customer journey and the value of the things that we're delivering and ways that we can deliver that value more effectively and faster and how we can deliver the value earlier with less effort without talking about whether this story is a one or a ten or whether it's a small or an extra large. We're talking about the customer value all the time instead. Which means we need to have some way of talking with the team about the customer value. And there is a stack of things that help with that. You know, OKR-ish things. Let us talk about what the business wants to achieve. And we can then bring back the customer journey or the user story to some of the, the, the key results that are part of your OKRs and stuff like that. When we're thinking about our OKRs or, or our North Star, there's probably multiple ways of achieving that. We can start talking about options instead. Um, we can start talk, talking about the assumptions that we're making about whether that option is going to be true or not. Like that example I gave earlier about the the catering job site, they'd made a bunch of assumptions about how their business model was going to work and how their customers were going to react to it and how much money they could make upselling versus attracting new customers. And they could have tried to make all those decisions up front, which would have been a mistake, because their assumptions turned out to be incorrect. Their original business model turned out not to work in the, in the public in the way that they thought it would but they had multiple options still open because they hadn't built all this stuff and they could use their resources in different ways. You can start turning those assumptions into hypotheses that you can test. If we'd been smarter at the time that we'd built that catering site, we'd have probably done some more prototyping first. You know, we'd have probably taken some kind of little mock-ups to some of the customers and put them in front of them and talked about whether they'd buy this or not. Um, we should have probably talked to more, well, no, should have. We definitely should have talked to more of that client's existing customers to find out why they were buying jobs and what the added, the, their perceived added value of the um, recruitment consultant was. Turn those into things you can test and then build experiments to test them. All these things let us talk about the value that we're delivering and why we're delivering it. They are to, to use the little triangle that Mike had in his keynote, they're moving stuff from that process space where we are focused on what we do to deliver stuff across more to the product space um, where we're understanding our customers and up, up to the... Um, organizational space where we're talking about what our kind of business objectives and things are. And equally, once we have our North Star and are talking about those things, we need to find out where we got that direction from in the first place and then more 
generative methods from the user research and product management world can help us going out and interviewing people, building personas so we can understand our customers more, doing more usability testing so we can understand how our existing customers use our products, diary studies, prototyping, lots of other ways that we can go discover stuff, create options, narrow them down, build experiments to do stuff in cheaper ways than just building software and having that conversation about whether this is a big story or a small story. And those thin bin split questions are a useful start. And the problem is they're a hard start because the thing that we've not talked about is why this stuff happens. Why there is this separation where the delivery team are saying, just take these things and turn them into software, and not having these conversations around, is this thing valuable or not? Can we build this in a more valuable way? These are good questions to ask, but you have to be in an organizational context and culture where you're allowed to ask those kinds of questions. A lot of teams, unfortunately, are in the position where there is a waterfall happening. You know, there is a separate group that does the user research and discovery work. And then there is a separate group that turns that researchy stuff into kind of product decisions and roadmaps. And that, that's thrown over the wall to the development team with now you build those user stories. And it's that siloing of behavior and culture and understanding that causes this misalignment between what the team is <laughs> building to deliver and what the business wants to you know, be a business and deliver value to their customers. So really, it's, it's again, Mike touched upon it quite a bit in his keynote, of understanding throughout the organization of why we are doing things and sharing those values throughout the organization and learning and driving your team direction through those principles all the time. trying to drive short feedback loops rather than long feedback loops. And the way I try and sum that up a lot, as you hear me say this a lot, do less together more often to do more. If we have product managers working with developers, if we have user researchers working with product, product managers, um, if we have all of those people working with marketing and um, the business analysts, then you're going to get a lot more effective, a lot more effective organisation, because with any luck, the goals are going to be much more aligned. So, I hope that was useful. If you take nothing else away, take away those thin bin split questions. They're a really useful way to start those conversations about value, which you can then hopefully drive up through the rest of your organisation. Thank you very much.